Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing a deck tech for Yuma Crowd Protector. Yuma is an 8 mana Naya 6-6. Six, six. He's a human ranger. He costs 1 less to cast for each land in our graveyard. So he's really never going to cost 8. Whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, you can sacrifice a land if you do draw a card. And then whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, make a 4-2 green plant warrior creature token with reach. So this is just some Yuma Desert Landfall. So I play Yuma. Deserts are back and better than ever. We have so many more desert options thanks to Thunder Junction's new Wild West plane. And since we don't really care about sacrificing our lands or having our lands go to the graveyard, Yuma practically has no commander tax. That's not always going to be true, uh, but he's never going to cost like a ton, which is nice. Um, also, him making a board of four twos is really powerful. Um, so just playing lands and doing what we want to do naturally advances our board state with these two guys. And he enables the deck simply by sacrificing lands when he enters and attacks, which is great. Here's the game plan. We don't need him to win. Just because lands is one of the stronger archetypes in Magic, just because, you know, you get rewarded by being able to do more things the more mana you have, and he gives you more mana. Um, so early game, we want to get set up with our small value pieces, like the land reanimation effects, things that say you can spit, uh, like play cards from the grave, right? Things like that. Mid game, we want to play Yuma and start making four twos and drawing cards. And then late game, we're going to swing out with an army of tokens and use our ample amount of mana and resources to overwhelm our opponents. Here's the vulnerability, um, land hate and grave hate. So we can get around some of the land hate, right? Just like Blood Moon is awkward, Confounding Conundrum is very difficult for us. It's really not cool. And Grave Hate is also no good because we want to be able to reanimate our lands from the graveyard eventually. So those are the two problems with the deck. Channel stuff. The deck costs 560 or so at the making of the video. Take that with a grain of salt just because the TCG player and all that saying that Yuma is really 30 bucks when he's not $30. Get the cards you need from TCG Player. Despite that price, I promise I got good prices. And then like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Talking about Planeswalkers, we have Renin 7 and Renin 6. Um, 7 says reveal the top 4 cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed into your hand, the rest into your graveyard. So that's just good, you know, we're never going to miss a land drop. We can put any number of lands from our hand onto the battlefield tapped. We can make a huge tree folk with power toughness equal to the number of lands we control. Or we get an emblem with return all permanents from our grave to our hand and we have no max hand size for the rest of the game. Which is pretty cool. Um, just being able to get all the lands and fitting the rest isn't that big of a deal. But I like I like the idea of the plus one and the minus three of just making a huge tree folk is great. And like, cause that tree folk is going to be like 15, 15. It's going to be crazy. And then just like practically getting a bunch of lands that we can just whip into play. Renin 6 is great. Return up to one target land from your graveyard to your hand. We don't care if lands go to our grave just because we have cards like Renin 6 that let us play lands from our grave or return lands to our hand so we can replay them. So return up to one target land card from your graveyard to your hand. Ideally, it's a fetch land. Renin 6 deals one damage to any target. Not crazy relevant, honestly. I mean, we could pick off a mana dork, but we're probably just going to do the plus. And then if we can somehow ult Renin 6, some miracle. Uh, instants and sorceries in our grave have retrace. We just get an emblem that says that. And retrace basically says you can discard a land and play it from the grave and paying its like costs too. Going into creatures, we have a lot of elementals. Ancient Green Warden um, lets us play our lands from our graveyard. And if a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to happen, happens again twice. Uh, it's just a land anomicon, whatever that cycle, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Ashaya is great because it makes all of our non-tokens into forests, um, which is kind of big because there are so many cards that are like destroy target non-land thing. And now our creatures are technically lands because of Ashaya and they make all of it tap for green. And every time a non-token enters, it's essentially a landfall trigger, which is great. We got classic AOZ. When he enters the battlefield, create zero Create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each land you control. And then whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, um, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on each plant. Ancient Green Warden, Ashaya, let's talk about them with AOZ. Just, we play AOZ, let's say 7. Let's just face value 7. We get 7 zero ones, uh, And we have Green Warden on the field. We play a land. That land's going to trigger that landfall ability twice. So now we have 7 2-3 plants. 
Ashaya is going to say with Avenger Zendikar, whenever a creature, a non-token creature, enters a battlefield under our control, put a 1-1 counter on all of our plants, which is good. Another thing about AOZ I almost forgot to mention. Yuma makes plant warriors. So he puts a 1-1 counter um, on our plants, which is kind of cool. We have Azusa Lost Seeking so we can play two additional lands on our turn because we like that. Colossal Rattle Worm is honestly insane. He's Flash because we're a desert deck. Assume he always has Flash. Four mana, six, five, Flash, Trample. And then when he dies, just search our deck for a basic desert. Like, we'll just exile him for two. That's like nothing, you know, for a desert card. Put it onto the battlefield, tapped. And those desert cards, we can then just sacrifice, reanimate later, get more plants, whatever. Dryad, uh, just so we can have our lands tap for any color. And also just um, we can play additional land, which is huge. We really want to be maxing out how many lands we can play a turn. Because lands are practically our spells. Dune Chanter, new card, two three for three with reach lands you control are they you know all lands in the graveyard or wherever they're deserts they're considered deserts and then they tap for any color and then we can mill two and gain one life card for each land milled this way which is great really just having all of our guys count as desert so yuma can start sacrificing basics or whatever and then getting plants off them is really big Elvish Reclaimer is just a one mana one two and it gets plus two plus two as long as there are three or more land cards in your graveyard which is really big and then we can pay two to have them sacrifice a land search our deck for any land card and put it on the battlefield tapped that's big. <sighs> His Azon Shaper of the Sand was really the OG desert commander. He's got desert walk which is hardly relevant I don't think but we can play desert lands from our graveyard which is what we want to do anyways. And then whenever a desert enters the battlefield under your control, create two 1-1 one, one sand guys, which is big. Um, really, It's really like the way you can read them. He lets us play deserts from our grave, and whenever a desert enters, we get two guys. And Dune Channer makes it so all of our lands are deserts, so they kind of have good synergy there. Lotus Cobra, whenever a land enters, we get a mana. It's infamous. You'll love it. You really don't hate it. Lotus Cover is a pretty fair magic card. I mean, it's pretty strong, but I mean, it's it's good. Whenever land enters, we get a mana. So basically, we get two mana per land when we play it. Like it per turn, essentially. Lumra Bellow of the Woods is a new card not out yet from Bloomborough, but it seemed too good to not include it. It is a six mana star star with vigilance and reach. When it enters the battlefield, um, mill four and then return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, which is huge. Um, we'll talk about that kind of effect in a second. It's also power and toughness are equal to the number of lands we control. So assumingly he's pretty big. Um, but talking about the mill four and then returning all lands to the battlefield, we have abilities that let us sacrifice our lands for benefit. Um, we'll say Zuranorb is a good example. So what we can do, and it's a little bit risky, right? But we can cast, Zuran Orb says, sacrifice a land, gain two life. That's all it really does. Um, but what we can do with that is, let's say we just have six mana, right? Just to hard cast them in a nutshell, or in a void, rather, or a vacuum, whatever you want to call it. He's in a something. Um, he's going to enter the battlefield. So on the cast trigger, right? If he isn't countered, fine. Then when he enters the battlefield and he has the enter the battlefield trigger go up on the stack, we can sacrifice all of our lands to Zuran Orb. We'll gain like 12 life, assuming we have six lands for that and assuming we get nothing back from him. Um, and then he's going to return all of our lands to the battlefield anyway. So there's some cool synergies with him. Mina and Den just really let us play an additional land on our turn. A 4-4 body is not bad. Uh, we can also return a land to our hand and target creature gets trampled not crazy relevant if we need to hit a landfall trigger for some reason we could sure do it but it's really just to play an additional land morag fury of akum the primary way we're going to really win so most landfall decks win by valakut stuff scape shift stuff deserts don't really allow for that space just because deserts take up so much of our lands so Mirag is a really good way for us to win. Each creature you control gets plus one plus oh for each time it's attacked. And then um, whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, if it's our main phase, there's an additional combat phase. So really every time we play a land, we get an additional combat phase and all of our guys get bigger and bigger, um, which is huge. It can go kind of nuts with a lot of things, even just like 
Yuma is going to attack. He's going to sacrifice a land. It's going to draw us a card. Since we have so many multiple play land per turn spells, we can just get multiple combats, which is really good to make more guys. He's good. He's a good win con. Uh, Nissa Resurgent Animist. Landfall is Lotus Cobra. Then if it's the second time that happened, you get the Lotus Cobra and then you reveal the top cards of your deck until you hit an elf or an elemental. We have a couple elves, but I'm pretty sure it's mostly elementals, just like Ashaya, Ancient Green Warden, Avengers Endicar, even Omnath. There's a lot of elementals. Uh, and then we put that card into our hand, which is um kind of cool. It's really just a Lotus Cobra with upside. Then we have Omnath, Locust of Rage. Whenever a land enters, we make a 5-5, and then whenever an elemental dies, we deal 3 damage to basically any target, is how that reads now. I think that was errated to any target creature player, because that is able to hit Planeswalker, so I think it's any target. Oracle of Moldiah lets us play an additional land, lets us also rip lands from the top of our deck so we don't have to waste any in our hand, which is great. Rampaging Ballast, just classic landfall card. 6-6 six, six for 6, trample. Whenever a land enters, you make a 4-4. Four, four. Sounds good to me. Ramanab Excavator, whenever you, you, you can just play lands from your graveyard. Um, those are the kind of abilities we want, is multiple land drops and then playing lands from our graveyard. Rumbleweed is too cool of a card for me to not put in. It's a one ecosystem army. I really like the flavor text, but otherwise it's really good. We can even read it as a one mana 8-8, eight, eight, Vigilance Reach Trample. And when it enters the battlefield, each other creature you control gets plus three, plus three, and trample till end of turn. We make a lot of guys, right? Scoot Swarm, we'll talk about you in a second for a lot of guys. But even just in a nutshell, if we have a handful of four twos, those four twos are now seven, seven fives with trample. Like that'll just end the game. I kind of running him as a pseudo crater hoop behemoth. Scoot Swarm, whenever a land enters the battlefield, make a one one insect. Then if you have six or more lands, make a copy of Scoot Swarm. It gets exponentially bigger. Um, Scoot Swarm can literally get your lands into the trillions, like and beyond. Like there is like it because they double every single time, because it's like you have one Scoot Swarm, now you have two Scoot Swarms. You play a land, now you have four. You play a land, now you have eight. You play a land, now you got sixteen. They go nuts, um, and they're one ones, and you can jump with them, so it's great. Just have a calculator handy because your dice aren't gonna be able to track it super well. Sylvan Safekeeper, sacrifice a land, target creature you control gains Shroud until end of turn. It's great protection from all of our guys, and we don't care about sacrificing our lands, especially our deserts, because Yuma's just going to make a 4-2 out of it, which is good to me. Tiller Engine. Whenever a land enters the battlefield tapped under your control, choose one. You can untap that land or tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls. A thing with deserts is that a lot of them enter tapped, especially the dual color ones. And in this deck, we have a lot of tap lands. Uh, just like you'll see in a bit, but we have a lot of things or like tap lands. So having our tap lands and our untapped is great, or we can just choose if we don't need the mana right away to just tap down something our opponent controls. So then we can either get an easy attack in, or you can do even super meta stuff. If you have like winter orb or whatever, it's cool. Tireless provisioner, um, three mana, three, two mistake of a magic card. In my opinion, when it enters the battlefield, make a treasure. No one's making a food off this guy. So he's basically Lotus Cobra, but the mana sticks around. Uh, you don't have to use it right away or between phases. Tireless positioner, crazy card. And it's an elf, so you can get it with, um, what's her name? Nissa. Kind of cool. We have Titania Protector of Argoth, five mana, five, three. When it enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's most likely going to happen uh, just because we want to sacrifice our lands. We have a good amount of fetch lands in the deck. Um, so we're probably just going to get a free landfall on that. And then whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, make a 5-3. So the cool thing about this is the way I look at this card is you use a fetch land turn, like any turn up until turn five before we play her, right? Then you return that land and then you sacrifice that land. You get another land and you get a free 5-3 out of it, which is cool. Wayward Swordtooth, really to let us play an additional land on each of our turns. You know the whole Ascend thing, you can't attack or block. That's fine. It's like, who cares? Um, he's a 5-5, which is pretty big. And Ascending is pretty easy. But the fact that he can't attack or block for a little bit, it's not a big deal. We just want to play additional lands. And then World Shaper, when it attacks, um, you may mill 3. And then when it dies, put all lands from your graveyard on the battlefield tapped. It's pretty good. Um, Yuma cares about land or deserts going into the graveyard from anywhere, I believe. So that is pretty good just because we can get a couple of guys. 
And then the final creature I want to talk about, I uh, made its own special slide, is Titania, Voice of Gaia. Three mana, three, four with reach, which is already pretty good. And then whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, we gain two life. Sounds good to me. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, if we have four or more lands in our grave and we have Argoth that land next to it, we exile them and meld them together to make Titania. Before we talk about Titania, Argoth is nice. It enters the battlefield tapped unless we control a legendary green creature. Honestly, it's most likely going to enter tapped early game and then late game it'll probably enter untapped. Tops for a green or we can sorcery speed, pay four mana, make a 2-2 two -two bear and mill three cards. Anyway, going into Titania Gaia Incarnate is crazy big. Vigilance, Reach, Trample, Haste, Power and Toughness are equal to the number of lands we control, which is already pretty big. And then on top of that, when it enters the battlefield, retor return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And this is the reason, like one of the reasons why we run cards like Tiller Engine, because now they're going to enter untapped, which is big. And then on top of all of that, we can pay four, ma four mana to put four Wubble Encounters on a land, make it a 4-4 Elemental, and it gets Haste. Pretty big. Pretty big card. That could just deal a lot of damage. Going into Sorcerers, you have Battle Get Recovery. Uh, return target cards from your grave to your hand. It's also a land on the other side that enters tapped. You guys know those cards. Um, it's good recursion, and it's a land when we need it. Cataclysmic Prospecting is X red red. Deals X damage to each creature for X mana spent from a desert. Make a tapped treasure. So it's kind of weird desert tribal in a way. I kind of like it. it. Just seems good where it's just a good board wipe, and then we can make more mana to rebuild for next turn hour of promise five mana is big but search your deck for two land cards land cards so any land put them on the battlefield tapped then if you control three or more deserts make two 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 black zombie creature tokens so here's how i look at this ideally by the time we cast this we're not tutoring up deserts we're getting like feel the dead or any of our better like good like really good lands um and then we just kind of get two zombies on top of it or worst case scenario we can just tutor up two lands especially the ones that deal one damage when they enter um and then make two guys off that so it's really just five men is pricey but it's a good card when it can make two guys life from the loan return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to the to your hand and it has dredge dredge three dredge three basically says instead of drawing you can mill three cards and then put this card on top um which is fine because we want cards to go to our graveyard and especially if they're lands, we get benefit from a lot of our cards. Nature's Lore is just going to search our deck for a forest, a triumph, a shock land, one of those new surveil lands, whatever. Just put it onto the battlefield. It's good ramp, really whatever we need it for. Uh, scape Shift, sacrifice any number of lands. Search your library for up to that many land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. Shuffle our library. It's kind of the old switcheroo. It's good because we get most of the lands out of our deck. We don't care that they go to our graveyard because we plan on reanimating them anyway. And especially if they're deserts, we just get four twos from that. So Escape Shift is pretty cool. And I also really like the art. Splendid Reclamation. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And short, sweet, to the point. Three visits. Same thing as Nature's Lore. New card for Revengeful Regrowth. Six mana. Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Then create that many... 4-2 plant warrior creature tokens with reach. So 6 mana for um, 3 four twos with reach, which it sounds good to me. I mean, look at those guys in the art. They're cooligans. And then you can flash it back for later. So great card. Even if it gets milled, that's fine. That's what it's there for. And then the final sorcery, we have World Souls Rage X Red Green. Deals X damage to any target and then put X land cards from your hand and or graveyard onto the battlefield tapped so i like this because we just kill something essentially we kill a creature or we kill a planeswalker or we deal a lot of damage to an opponent and then we reanimate a lot of lands from our graveyard we're probably not putting them for our hand right we're probably just putting them from a graveyard or do whatever makes sense right either way really good Going into instance, we just have crop rotation. As an additional cost, sack a land, search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap. It's a fine turn one. You could just turn a forest into a triumph. I like it. Entish, Restor Entish Restoration is three mana. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, tapped. If you control a creature with power four or greater, instead, search your library for up to three basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, tapped. Here's how I read this card. I imagine Yuma's on the field, and Yuma's like a 6-6, six, six, right? So... 
turn four, I guess we're doing this, or it doesn't matter when we do it because it's ramp either way. But assume Yuma's on the field, right? Sacrifice a desert, make a four two, and then get three basics, put them on the battlefield tapped. Pretty good. Harrow, kind of worse Entis Restoration. Um, as an additional cost, sacrifice a land, search your deck for two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield. Untapped, however, and then you shuffle your library. Um, it's fine. Again, you just get a 4-2 plant, assuming you sacrifice a desert, and then you get two basics. So, sounds good to me. Realms Uncharted is kind of an annoying magic card. Search your library for four land cards with different names and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of them, put the chosen cards into your graveyard, and the rest into your hand, then shuffle your library. It's a lose-lose for your opponent because we don't care if our lands go to our grave anyway. So it's kind of like we're practically just getting the four best lands from our deck. Stroke of Midnight, I'm starting to get uh, starting to get more hot on this card just because I used to really like Generous Gift, um, but very rarely do you need to destroy a permanent. Like, like you don't really have to get rid of like a land in most cases and then just destroy a target non-land permanent. It's controlled, makes a 1-1. One, one. The thing is, is I think sacrificing a three th or having a one one over a three three for our opponent is worth it over not being able to hit a land because you're most likely not hitting a land anyways. Uh, and then source supply here is just because it's good cheap removal. Going into artifacts, we have Amulet of Vigor. Whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped under our control, untap it. It's good logic, right? Not good logic. It's just we have a lot of things that enter tapped, and I want them to not enter tapped. Amulet of Vigor solves that for one mana. Um, Brass's Tunnel Grinder. When it enters the battlefield, you may discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. We can discard Desert to make a lot of 4-2s, which is cool. Then, at the beginning of our end step, if you descended this turn, put a boar counter on Brass's Tunnel Grinder. Then, remove three or more. Then if you have three or more boar counters, you flip it into the land. Descending is just if a permanent card was put into your graveyard from anywhere. So, it comes in the battlefield. We're already guaranteed to get one boar counter on it, right? So we only have two more turns before it flips into the land. And either way, it just filters our hand, which is nice. Then, add a red. Whenever you cast a permanent spell using this, you discover X where X has the mana value. So it's kind of like a pseudo cascade on your next spell, which is good too. Conduit of Worlds, you may play lands from your graveyard. I really don't plan on using the bottom effect of this very much, just because we have other stuff we'd rather do, and I think we'd rather just play lands from it because we i mean but in a pinch we can always do the alternative crucible of worlds just to let us play lands from our graveyard i know it might seem redundant to have a lot of these like effects in the deck but we need this effect to happen so that's why we have so many of them because the deck functions so much better when we can consistently do it soul ring soul ring is this fast mana and then zerum orb i mentioned it earlier zero mana it's a free spell sacrifice a land gain two life Going into enchantments, we have Anointed Procession. Uh, basically, if we're going to make a plant token or a ballot or an elemental creature token or a plant, whatever, right? We're going to double it. Case of the Locked Hothouse. You may play an additional land on our turn, which is good. That's why we're running it. And then if we have seven or more lands, we're going to solve it. That's pretty much going to happen almost right away because we are a ramp deck at the end of the day. Just lands do that. Then you may look at the top card of your library at any time and you may play lands and cast creatures and enchantments from the top of our deck. That's kind of like the icing on the cake because uh, exploration lets you play an additional land and case of the locked hothouse costs four rather than one. But it's such a huge effect that it is so worth it and exploration just so we can have more land drops. Belladar Retreat. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, choose one, make a 2-2 two -two cat, or put a counter on each of our guys, and they get Vigilance. There is no wrong option, option here. I think if you want to have one turn where you just make a bunch of cats, and then you have another turn where you put a bunch of counters on your guy, guys, it really depends on your board state. If you need creatures, you make cats. If you're content with your amount of creatures, and or you don't really want more, or you just want them to be bigger, do the second option, and it's basically a free attack because they get Vigilance until end of turn. Undergrowth Recon, at the beginning of your upkeep, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It's just a free land drop, pretty much. We, we don't care about middling our stuff. And then Warstorm Surge is, I, I kind of like it. I originally had Terror in the Peaks and the deck over it, but I found Warstorm Surge is more annoying to deal with, and it's only one more mana, and we're such a, we get so much mana, it hardly matters. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power, to target creature or player or planeswalker. That's errata because that card was printed in 2015. We make four twos. 
four twos is no joke of a power you know like that's big that a four four damage will kill the majority of creatures and if we're making multiple of them in a turn or we're doing like whatever we're having a lot of guys enter that's big that's like a lot of damage like that can just kill people straight up like no combat damage that, that war storm circle will just straight up kill people going into the bulk of the lands i organized these the best i could we have deserts first all of these lands they enter the battlefield tapped they're all deserts and then when they enter they deal one damage to target opponent so it's just a little added benefit arid archway enters the battlefield tapped when it enters the battlefield uh return a land you control to its understand so it's just a desert bounce land but if you bounce the desert you surveil one which is nice and it taps for two colorless the idea with this is again we have like cards like tiller engine and we have like amulet of vigor so all of these ideally will enter untapped but don't count on it it's just like the ideal cactus preserve enters tapped add one man of any you know land you can produce it's basically a reflecting pool that you can then make an xx green plant creature with reach where x is the greatest mana value among your commanders just fun fact our commander at worst cost eight so we can pay three mana to make this an eight eight which is big conduit pylons enters the battlefield surveil one really good mill of land get a cat get a, a plant sounds good uh, attach for our colors or we can filter deserts of the fervent indomitable and true for hazard ronas and aketra they enter tapped fine whatever they add a mana of the, their color but they're nice because you can cycle them and again yuma doesn't care where the lands come from or the deserts come from as long as they're entering the grave so we draw a card and we get a plant from cycling them dunes of the dead Enters, or it just taps for a colorless and then when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield make a black zombie so this is honestly the land this is the ideal desert to sacrifice just because um we get a zombie out of it which is good grasping dunes is good because it sacrifices itself for one mana and you put a minus one minus one counter on a creature it is unfortunate we can only do it as a sorcery but again paying one mana or i guess essentially losing out two mana to get a 4-2 and to um, put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature. Not bad. Cat, Sheep, Oasis. Um, they're all going to, all the, this cycle does the same thing um, from our, they tap for a color unless you pay a life to add a green or you pay a mana cost to sacrifice a desert. Not that desert, just any desert. Uh, target creature gets plus three, plus three, um, activated only as a sorcery. And then it's, this one is a not as a sorcery it's just deal two damage to each opponent which is nice when you sacrifice a desert scavenger grounds exiles all graveyards i know we said earlier that we don't want graves to be exiled but sometimes in a pinch we might have to um so it's good to have that option and it's a desert so it counts uh chef at dunes uh do it only as a sorcery but we can sacrifice a desert pay all that mana and then give our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn which is nice because now our plants are five threes and then we just really have all of the fetch lands. The fetch lands are nice just so we can grab our shock lands, our triumphs, or whatever, right? Or the murder, the Karlov lands. I don't know, the surveil lands. I guess that's what they're called, surveil lands. Uh, just because they are have basic land types. Not basic land types, but they have mountain forest types, like whatever, tutorable. They enter the battlefield tapped, um, and when they enter, they surveil. And again, surveiling is really good because we get cactuses, cactus guys, when we surveil. Then we just have all of the shock lands because they're just tutorable they're going to enter untapped and then going into the not cycled lands we have command tower because it's going to tap for any color uh untapped field of the dead enters tapped but if we have seven or more lands and seven or more different named lands which we really will because we only have a handful of basics make a 2-2 zombie which is really good we're going to be making multiple 2-2 zombies a turn with our multiple land drops flagstones of trochire i always want to call it tark here and i know it's wrong um, anyway, when it's put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card and put it on the battlefield tapped. So this is a fine card to sacrifice just with Yuma's ability or just with any other sacrifice of land abilities, uh, just because it replaces itself with a better land. And then it's recurrable and we can do it later. Jetmere's Garden, just so it's all of our colors, we can cycle it later. Sounds good. Riftstone Portal is an interesting card. Um, I like it because we don't care if it goes to our grave you know it just kind of helps our other lands add one colorless mana to your mana pool or as long as it's in your graveyard lands you control have they can tap for green or white 
Um, this is the only color from Judgment. I assume I think it's Judgment um, that works for our colors. Otherwise, I would have added more of them. But yeah, just having all of our lands, even like our random deserts that tap for colorless or even strip mine tap for green or white is really good. And then we have strip mine just to add a colorless or sacrifice it to destroy target land. Here's where we can be kind of cringe and lame is I don't like strip locking people, but it is a viable strategy if we need to win. So the strip locking is a term in magic uh, when you constantly play strip mine or destroy target land effects and you do it multiple times a turn. So when we have cards like let's say Ramanant Excavator, Crucible of Worlds that let us play lands from our graveyard, and we have cards like Oracle of Maldaya or Azusa that let us play multiple land drops a turn, we can effectively sacrifice our land drops and like not get the mana out of them to just start blowing up our opponent's lands. So it's like, since we'll be, say like we have three land drops in a turn, for example, it's like we essentially just don't have any, well, we still get the landfall triggers, but we blow up three of our opponent's lands and we can do this like every turn, which is really annoying. And Wasteland essentially does the same thing, but it is for a non-basic land. So it's a little bit worse, but I mean, you if you if you had the option of destroying a dual land or a basic land, you're probably popping the dual land anyway. So And then finally for our basics, we just have four forest, three mountains, and three plains. Uh just because we don't I don't think we really have anything that tutors up basics. It's just all of our tutors can get our shock lands, our triumphs, it can get the you know, whatever. So we don't really need a ton of basics, but it's still important to have it just in case of Blood Moon effects. Honestly, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Get the cards you need from the link down below. Uh, like the video, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out. It helps the channel grow. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.